back after a little bit of a break here to talk about some movie news y'all perfect time to come back with CinemaCon with the Maxine trailer also that X-Men 97 episode did y'all see that this week now I'm going to forewarn you we, we're going to get into a little bit of spoilers with that so just go ahead and hit that mute button switch to another tab then come back because I will admit we're going to go into spoilers guys that X-Men 97 episode was a banger holy freaking crap but man, we've got some people back in the house. We got Laser. What's going on, man? It's good to see you again, bro. Thanks for coming back in. We also got Eric Patterson. Hey, Eric. Good to see you. Good to see you. And also, I see my good friend Isaac. What's going on, man? Thank you for welcoming me back into this. Just need a little break, y'all, and it feels good to be back. So I am excited. But let me get my co-hosts in here, y'all. Let's introduce them, get them back in the swing of things. Let's get into this conversation we got my man loretta what's going on man how are you how you been shit it's been a couple weeks <laughs> da, na, 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 na. <laughs> it's been a somber week but i'm glad to be back i'm glad i'm always happy to talk shop man my brother from another what's up leo um yeah it's been hectic you know it's been an interesting couple of weeks but um you know that's why we have our things that we love to comfort us and pull at our heartstrings a little bit and make us yeah. feel things yes, so sir. um yeah I'm, I'm ready to dig in man and honestly it's great to be back um yeah we got a lot to talk about you know glad to have you back in man to talk about exactly what's on your sweatshirt my man with that clean little x-men oh <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <perfect>. <laughs> i just i look down look and I'm like oh my heart <laughs> <laughs> oh man and then let me not forget the person who brought that banner to the party what's going on with you <laughs> i love committing to you? the bit i'm good how y'all doing it's good to be back and puerto rico yes yeah puerto rico indeed <laughs> <laughs> what up oh we good it's been it's been raining but you know what we up that that's what matters <laughs> we up we up y'all oh has it been raining over there it has it's been like either super sunny and then super rainy so but it's fine because you know what at least it's not too hot that so, sounds exactly like california weather it's driving me yeah. nuts yeah. yeah but it's been fine it's been i right. hopefully it doesn't rain this weekend because uh we do plan on going on a beach day Ooh, no rain uh, no rain yes sir colby, colby <laughs> is intrigued answer the man iliana <laughs> yep <laughs> No, it's Magneto was right. That's that's not Magneto wants you. I mean, if you're immune, he probably does want you. You know, we don't know. Listen with that. Or if you're a Southern Belle, he be having Oop. on. <laughs> he go. He trying to get everybody. Get it. Oh, he got a slutty little Listen, outfit. Well, dude, <laughs> what the we'll get into that? it. But Mag Magneto is—he's really wilding out his design <laughs> with this let's let's we'll talk about it but it's absolutely it's absolutely a choice and it's intentional and i see them 
I see these animators for what they are. Yeah, let's just be honest. They got they they had some things on their mind when they were designing. Yeah. <laughs> y'all see how many black you know shots Rogue got now? I'm like, y'all done made this more adult. <laughs> yeah. I, like, oh <laughs> yeah. This yeah. definitely feels a little bit more mature, if you can yeah. say that. Well, I think Disney knows its audience, so they're really pushing the boundaries of what they can hey. give us adults. <laughs> I was surprised, but pleasantly. Emma the this is he really is and i'll drink to that <laughs> oh man i got thoughts i got thoughts we'll get into it he is damn okay let's go <laughs> just steal your girl all right y'all let's get in with our first segment we kind of did some reordering so Hey, I Ileana's on there. <laughs> I'm in. Pack your voice. I'm in. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> oh, man. All right, y'all. So, right. for the first segment, we're just going to talk about a couple of movies and shows we've been watching this week. And I'm going to go to Lowe first for a couple of shows that he's been watching. And I think we've been watching the same, too. But, Lowe, let us know, man, what you've been watching this week. I mean, <laughs> so. You know, what's fun, too, is um, it's not just 97. I've actually been doing a full that anim animated series re rewatch. Oh, and wow. it's so it's like really kind of like almost scary how well I timed. Uh, season two has flashbacks for the team. Uh, we go into Weapon X. We go into Rogue's background. We go into Gambit's background. And I swear, Gambit and Rogue's are back to back. And I was on those episodes when this week's episode premieres. So I was totally into their lives into their backstories and was not ready for what came so um are we doing we're doing full spoilers right i think laser might freak out sorry laser you're gonna have to hit that <laughs> mute, but yeah so let's yeah I don't, we don't have the big banner to flash but spoilers spoilers yep. spoilers um entering genosha from the start of the, of the show was beautiful um i i just thought the concept of of Genosha being a part of the United Nations was such a cool thought to think about. And I thought it was so cool seeing the statues of Xavier and Magneto. And it's like, man, we did it. We are here. Like, and Magneto's looking out at the ocean, like, yes, I'll be the chancellor. And this is the dream. Like, you know, it, it's like, we were so there. We were happy. Freaking Sebastian from Hellfire Club's there. Freaking Callisto from the Morlocks. Uh, so many Easter eggs, so many Easter eggs. We got Dazzler dancing in the streets. We got multiple men doing whatever the hell he was doing. I don't think he was dancing. Um, <laughs> multiple men was having multiple men was having some <laughs> rhythm problems. But um, God, the market, everything about Genosha was so beautiful, so colorful. Seeing all the all the mutants playing together freely, peacefully, it was like such bliss. And then we start diving into the emotional sections of our storylines of this season um even just the interviews at the x mansion while uh rogue gambit and magneto went to genosha the drama with the reporter at the x mansion like cyclops is questioning gene's love like do you love me and um you know that was actually really really well played i i, I did not see the moment where gene's like using her teleconnect powers to like open the lake like Moses. And she's just like looking at her memories in the water, like such a mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. look at your memories. And then here comes Logan, like, Hey red. And then we get a smooch. Tea. We got Tea. Smooch Logan. And um, <laughs> one of my favorite lines in the entire series, not alone, not just 97, like the entire series was uh, Jean looks at Logan. She's like, your eyes have seen so many sunsets. And, Logan was like, they've only seen one of you, Red. Oh, with the with the Riz. Logan just got mad game. Of course he got the smooch. That, that's that's um, my short king. <laughs> and you know, I'm gonna open this up to everybody, but we all know where were we at when cable came up and was like, evacuate the city. Evacuate. I was like, I was they're, like they're fucked. yeah, I was like, they're so, done, dude. They're so from the from the second I saw cable, I was like. And Get my mouth, st my mouth stayed open for like twenty minutes. I was like, oh, I was like, no, no. And it got worse, and it got worse. I think Banshee was the first casualty. I think Banshee was like, everybody get to the. And he oh, <laughs> he's just... 
He gets the stakes were high. I was like, yo, Nightcrawler is like on the verge of death. And we all know what happened next, man. We had probably one of the most heroic scenes in the franchise by Gambit. We it was like giving Akira vibes on his on his motorcycle. I was right. like, yo, visually stunning. And oh my god, one of the greatest send-offs for a hero ever. Um, Leo, no, go ahead, man. Go ahead. You got it down. Uh, listen, man, that. That had me in tears, guys. Like, I won't even front. We got to the point when Gambit was going to sacrifice himself to the Sentinel. Man, I had some tears in my eyes, y'all. And we know that the lady with the glasses, y'all know that something's going on with that woman. Yeah. Whether we think it's a sneak <laughs> or we think she's some kind of, she Don't knows what happened with the Sentinels. I'm like, now why didn't the Sentinel target your ass? Now, I know there was like one point during it where it kind of looked like it, but I'm like, I'm no good and well. She knows what's going on. But y'all, the episode was beautifully painted. To be mm -hmm. reunited with Nightcrawler in the beginning, give us these wonderful feelings of joy and appreciation for a mutant kind. Something we hadn't really obviously seen throughout the whole series. But finally, there was a promised land, if you will, built for the mutants. And it was just, like you said, Lo, this stark contrast to essentially a 9-11 tragedy style event happening in the second half, which is such a crazy thematic message of just these powerful these beings with all these powers could still feel helpless in a tragic in like circumstance mm -hmm. that was so crazy to see on screen but beautifully written by the writing team um i'm not sure what happened with bo de mayo but wow what a poignant message he made here uh but i i just i love this episode i mean the vivid use of color between the green when magneto was going to make his sacrifice and that vivid purple that Gambit has with his ability, which also I'm so interested in and intrigued with how they balance the different levels of mutants because Magneto, somebody who is a Omega, Omega. Level mutant, was was terminated versus mm -hmm. Gambit, probably a more advanced level mutant, was able to destroy the Sentinel. I thought that was really cool, brave sacrifice, very very shown in anime, if you will, it very much had that like. Remember my name. Remember who I am. I am Gambit. <laughs> remember, remember it. And I was like, yo, he went out like a true hero. I love that episode so much. But brilliant. This show showed us this event for coming in the last episode. So when the last episode is a very brief scene where Jean is having a, a vision and you see her seeing Cable and he comes up in like this kind of gust of wind crazy that the very next episode it pays off because i was like what is that about but then in the very next episode it's like oh yeah they get obliterated um so <laughs> yeah, just a cool way to bridge the gaps and really connect between episode to episode and not only is this a contrast within the episode but it's a contrast from the last episode which was like very cool video gamey graphics we got to be with jubilee and sunspot in this video game land that was like super fun it was like okay this mm. is like a kind of villain of the week fun little and then the second half of that episode obviously was storm but i mean x-men 97 i gotta admit i just need marvel to look at this and bring this kind of energy to the live action x-men i didn't know until probably about the first two episodes obviously that i missed this x-men that much like i was like i missed this version of x-men like i missed cyclops being like this cool leader this which by the way he had quite a breakdown during the episode too but I, I really missed this team of X-Men. The short Wolverine, the storm with the powers, even though they got stripped away. But she gonna get them back, y'all. We ain't worried yet. But we we really got our our core X-Men team back. Uh-oh. Did I freeze? Just you're for good. a second, but you're back. Yeah, right. slight little robotic voice, but you're good. Yeah, I was like, uh-oh. Uh, but Ileana, what'd you think, man? X Men '97, great episode. I'm obsessed. I'm honestly, oh. I've been hooked since episode one. I oh. have to admit, I think I've told you guys that I have to admit, like I didn't like X Men '92, like the original like X Men oh, anime series. I didn't get OG? to see. I never saw it. Oh, I'm okay. new here, so I never saw it. <laughs> it was never on when I was watching cartoons when I was young. For some reason, like it just truly never came up on my cable here 
And so this, you know, series comes along. I was like, okay, let's dive in. I am now hooked. So I'm definitely going to like eventually binge the original series. But holy crap, I am in love with the animation. Like you guys mentioned, it is so incredibly, not only colorful, but really, really dynamic. And it's really satisfying that, that need I have for really fun animated storytelling and it's something that and just quick parentheses my other show that i've been watching has uh has been solo leveling which is the adaptation of the korean manhwa man and i gotta watch that fantastic. i gotta watch that the season just finished it's fantastic um highly recommend but that action of course it's, that show is a lot more mature than the next by 97 like it's really really gory and bloody but the the way that the action is so detailed and it is a storytelling device in and of itself i love it i i honestly have been craving it for a while and i'm really really happy that marvel has really delivered with this series and bring like leo said bring that energy of being faithful to these characters even if you're not doing a you know step by step frame by frame adaptation at least give us this charisma this personality and this complexity because we can get by everyone everyone has something going on everyone has an arc to uh to really dive into and like really dig into and I was never like with the live action films. I honestly was never super into Cyclops because he was sidelined so much. So it's really, really refreshing to see a very fully developed Cyclops, a very fully developed Jean Grey, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, this episode, a banger, so emotionally, like obviously charged, but there's, I just love that you're still hooked with the, with the mystery of it. There's yeah. still so much that we don't know. And I think that's what really helps this week by week drop. Like th Absolutely. this is honestly, I think uh, a ten out of ten. I think I think this is the strategy that Disney and Marvel should continue with. Um, and as we can see, it gives results. It really delivers. So I'm really excited for this week. I don't know if I'm emotionally ready, but <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Mixing in melodrama with superhero fare was like perfect. I mean, this really this, good balance. These X Men comics, by the way, like they have the mm -hmm. melodrama tone to them, and they are political, and they do relate to real world events. And I love how they're mm -hmm. roping that in, even though this is going very accurately with the comic run. So mm -hmm. it's kind of scary that things are like lining up again. Because it's like, okay, y'all wrote this back before some of these events happened and stuff like the whole Wolverine trial and all that. So roping in like real world events, like the insurrection and roping in kind of this 9-11 type tragic kind of feel. It's cool to see them like rope in that those real world happenings and tie those themes in the X-Men. Man, this is this show. I'm telling y'all, I'm like Marvel. Listen, for the MCU, this is the type of X-Men team we need. I, if Even if we want to start with the core five, we want to start with the original team, I'm down with that. We don't even need Wolverine in the beginning. But I need Cyclops to be that leader. I need Jean Grey to be in there. Eventually, I need Storm to have that presence to be the Omega <laughs> level <laughs> right, of the team. That she Arctic winds, heed my command. <laughs> That is my yeah, it's dramatic, but it's so good because she's so <laughs> commanding. I'm like, yes, yes, my queen. <laughs> she's, I believe it. She, so Ileana, she's been like that since 92. Yeah. Like good. in the 92 series, she was. I and love so it. You watch the live action movies and you're like, uh, well, cool. Ho <laughs> like Holly Berry went ahead and zap toad in the first. Cool. Okay. But like in, in the series, like, yeah, she like shows up and shows out. Like that's my she's, favorite. She's truly, she's either. a goddess. I mean, she was revered as a goddess, and yeah. where she's from. So, like, of course, I oh, she should act like a goddess. She is. So, yeah, definitely, I I'm really invested, and I can't wait to get back to Storm's plot too. It's like Storm's storyline because we didn't get to see that this episode because it's so jam packed. But yeah, um, I'm high. Well, what else? Also, you talking, man? Uh, I was gonna say before we move on. I we've been on this for a minute, but I have a couple minor notes. Um, so Leech, the, the little boy that was with Magneto in the end, 
Um, he's a, a member of the Morlocks, and I'm on season three right now of the '92 series. I just finished the Dark Phoenix arc. I, I'm deep diving. Oh, I'm damn. swimming. Yeah, you're deep in it. Yeah, and what's interesting is, like, it, this is how it's. I know Bo DeMaio really cared, and all the creators were really involved. Leech appears three times in those three seasons because we have like. We don't even have Morlock-centric episodes, but he appears a lot. So for him to be with Magneto in the end was really interesting. Also, I didn't realize how many times Gambit says that. Because even as a kid, I never picked up on that catchphrase. But Mon my favorite... Mo- what was it? Mon ami? No, 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 no. So my, my favorite moment he ever uses that phrase that we get is uh, they're fighting Apocalypse. And it looks like all is lost, right? Like the oh, X-Men are getting their... This one. The, the X-Men are getting their ass kicked, yeah. right? And then... Out of nowhere, there's a jet, and the jet flies into like, Apocalypse's yep. face. Gambit <laughs> flips out of the jet, and he's like, "My name's Gambit. Remember it." I was like, <laughs> "Yo!" Like, so she I didn't realize. Nice. <laughs> like, I didn't realize he said that several times before. And, oh yeah, um, yeah. So that really, really got me, and it made me. It made the weight of that moment just even more, especially for fans of the uh, the original series. So. Oh, how, great writing. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Brilliant, brilliant writing, brilliant writing. We're eating good. We're eating <laughs> so good. And let's talk about the score in this episode before we move oh. on. Let's just get a, mo- a, mo- a moment Newton for the Brothers. score. Oh, Incredible. It's just mm, it. delicious. Delish. Hey, and okay, well, you know what? It's, it's so hard to get away from this, but how freaking <laughs> sexy was that dance scene? I was like, yes. yo, what? Okay. Is this rated R? This? That was hot, <laughs> They were like to... stroking each other. I was like, oh, oh what's sir, going on? <laughs> sir, this show is so horny. <laughs> oh my god. This it show is. No, it oh. is so <laughs> when <laughs> let's and talk Gam- about when like, when Gambit's Magneto. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Gambit, Gambit's like, having a great time. He's, like, <laughs> he's like drinking, he's like, fuck this. <laughs> No, but there's a scene where Magneto like just falls, but like uh, like so seductively, and I was like, "Whore!" Yes. <laughs> that is no, a man yeah. slut. His legs I were wide you. open. <laughs> yes, it's, it's like in the that second episode it's off the rails. When he kind of falls and that little sexy Dude, pose on the no. table. I'm like, no. what are you doing? on the desk, he was all leaning back, like, "Bro, you know, if they do, <laughs> I was Sir. like, look at this man." No Sir, way. this is like we're past Silver Fox. This is like the like just I can't even. I I, I understand Rogue. Rogue, I see you and I respect you. I see I see the the appeal. This is literally a yassified he man. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that man. Leaned and I said up what I said. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this season Magneto was like, they need to see my arms this time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> he took the his arms, sleeves off. The legs. Like the legs, yes. like the curtain bangs are curtain banging, like the hair, the blowout. <laughs> like sir. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> well, we'll see if we can get to see the blowout again. But good lord. <laughs> I have to give it to them. Shocking. So good. Good evening, Professor Good Phil Penn and Mark Show. Welcome in. Lo, what was another thing you watched this week? Oh, so I was going to say, um, what movie are you doing, Leo? I don't want to pick the same one. Um, so I'm going to do the uh, that new Guy Ritchie movie. Okay, cool. So, look, guys, I, I want to talk about this because I'm not a big fan, okay? I'm not a fan. But Uh-oh. I saw New Empire. It was mildly entertaining uh, okay. for like a... For like a turn off your brain popcorn blockbuster, I'll be honest, it's so freaking stupid. But because of that, I just I just laughed at all the stuff and the action was actually pretty well choreographed in in a weird Titan sort of way. But guys, I haven't laughed this hard in a theater for a while now. It was a few months maybe. I can't remember last time I laughed this hard. But when hell yeah. But when Kong picked up that little baby Kong. And started swinging his ass around. And started beating the shit out of the others. That's no, so good. Guys, okay. in the theater, I was screaming. I was like, what? He was like using the baby Kong as a baseball it. bat. So good. So good. 
He was swatting the shit out of them like they were some little flies on the wall. <laughs> that little, took that little baby one. And one that like, cinema, baby. That, that is the movies. movies. <laughs> and what really made the scene is like after he's done beating that ass, he drops the baby and the baby comes like, well, what is going on? And like his face was like. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> But yeah, so I saw, I saw, I saw Godzilla X Kong. Um, you know, a lot of plot convenient stuff. Like, uh, I'll be honest, it's like I was cracking up the whole time, but it was just because of how ridiculous it was. Like, oh no, Kong hurt his hand, and it's like, hey, you know what? I was working on a secret project about five to ten years ago, and you know what? It's just right over there. I'm gonna go get it. It fits his hand. I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna fix his hand. Like. Okay, that was conveniently oh, right. We we've had a project going on for three years over here in the corner. Let's no, go what killed me? He left. No, he no, what killed me is he left by himself in Hollow Earth, oh one God. of the most dangerous places on the yeah. planet, and he came back with the hand like we good guys. Like <laughs> so ridiculous. And then um, you know, but look, guys, I, I had fun with it. It was really cool seeing Godzilla and Kong team up. I kind of liked how yeah. Godzilla was cameoing in his own movie. Um, he's, he's, not he's, not he's, he, he's not really in the movie it's like the whole movie is about hollow earth and kong and the monkeys and then godzilla's like hey what up, y'all <laughs> like at the very end like <laughs> yeah. but um yeah i had fun with it it was cool I, you know i'm not really a big you know godzilla versus kong guy i didn't really like that one but this one just had me had me entertained and i think that's why we go to the movies right so oh absolutely i, I, feel I like, like the last one kong. that's what it was all about man it's just like you know what Turn your brain just fucking around. Watch it. Yeah. Whatever. I will say I could have done without the like prophecy kind of stuff, like the <laughs> kind of messiah storyline. I was like, I could have done saying, without all that shit. I'm saying it, it but, got really um, ridiculous. Did you yeah, see those hieroglyphics? The hieroglyphs yeah. are, the hieroglyphics were so perfectly like, oh, so you see, that's Godzilla. And um <laughs> and there's Kong over there. He, and yeah, and then King. Mothra's gonna wake those up. Kong Godzilla, and gonna <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh we need more of that. God. No, and what's funny is I, I could picture Brian, like Tyree Henry, doing the Godzilla. <laughs> they son all guy. I love Brian Tyree Henry so much. He's so and he's great. truly my so favorite great. part of the last. He was movie. cracking me up, and like you know, I, I, from the original cast, he's probably the most entertaining one of them all. So he's yeah, the guy yeah, with the charisma. Um, him and uh Dan Stevens were so good together. Like I was like, oh, I yeah. really like the two of them. They're fucking funny, man. Damn. Oh, and by the way, okay, last part because I, I we we we've been on my segment for far too long. But yo, Kong had a toothache, and then Dan Stevens oh. is like, I got you, buddy. Look at this tooth. Look at this tooth. It is ready for you. Here you go. Like what? We have a <laughs> we have Titan no. dentists. Like, <laughs> Meanwhile, you got Rebecca Hall on the sideline giving a full explanation of all the shit that's going on. She's like, you know what? Oh my God. Go for it. Yeah, and then she kept going. <laughs> no, she kept going. It's like, do we really care at this point what she's saying right now? Just an attractive exposition machine. That's all it, that's all she, her character ended up being. It's just like, all right, well, have her explain what's going on now because I have no idea. <laughs> Man, I think Godzilla versus Kong movies could be like the good dinosaur. We don't do we need dialogue? We just need them to just kind of go around. <laughs> Listen, there's a good like oh, 10, 15 I like minutes dinosaur. in the beginning where there's just the, them talking and shit. I'm like, great. You know what? I don't need the human shit. I'm cool with them just talking yeah. amongst each other. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's just, it was so ridiculous. But I had I had a good time, man. Two thumbs up for blind, dumb fun. <laughs> we love to turn off our brains every now and then. <laughs> just, just, just as a good reset. Yeah, good I need reset. to. I need to go to the theaters. I haven't been to the theaters in like three weeks. Good lord! Oh, I'm by behind. the way, it, it, I've been it at looks home. great. If you see it on the big screen, it looks looks good. I really, I got that one lined up. I got to see Love Lies Bleeding. I think I'm going to see yeah, that next, uh, see next that this too. week. I'm going to see it this Wednesday probably. Oh, I'm very be. very excited. But I've been I've been on that show grind. Like I've been wa I've been watching X Men '97, and I just finished Solo Leveling. That just finished its first season and was phenomenal. Ooh. And if if you guys don't know or the audience doesn't know what Solo Leveling Ooh. is. Ooh. Uh oh, Ooh, did I freeze for a second? Am I back? I think I froze. <laughs> you oh, good? I thought it was me. 
<laughs> all right yeah so yeah you guys like y'all definitely i think you guys would like solo leveling it is if you are into really really action-packed anime uh animation that is so visually almost it is teetering on the edge of overwhelming but it's still so clear frame by frame that you can see what's going on and not just be like you know blinded uh because that's something that i think happens to me a lot with um some anime um series i find one piece sometimes really really overwhelming visually but that's just me because <laughs> well, yeah, it's just so that. much going on but solo leveling really i don't know it really has my heart and the the storyline is very interesting so mm. definitely check it out i think it's just 12 episodes right now like season one so it's a very easy binge on uh the good old crunchy roll so definitely check that out and watch x-men 97 if the audience has not seen it yet which i would doubt but if not get on that shit solo leveling so would you say it or do you like it more than jujutsu kaisen or I have not seen Jujutsu Kaisen, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. I'm still dipping my toes in the, the realm of anime, but <clears> I <throat> really, really enjoy solo leveling. Like, even the theme song, I will, like, turn up to it. Like, it's theme, I think it's a, I think BTS sings it. It's it's just, it's a banger. It's, oh, BTS it's, it's, sings the theme song? I, okay. I think so, yeah, yeah. No, there's a lot of hype That's around wild. this show. Yeah. I, I've, it's, I've never, it's, it's gone I've never off heard on of, like, a pop like a pop group or star doing a TV series. Well, maybe I know, right? Plan, but that was like, that was <laughs> the thing, but listen to the song. There's Google, like solo leveling intro theme. And it is a banger. I love it. I eat it up. I'm not usually a big intro guy. I admit. So I'm definitely going to look up the intro. And not see not I will it. skip the hell out of them, but this one is fun. This one has got, it's got a beat. It's a little rock, a little pop rock to it. Oh, it's good. I like it. I was gonna say, shouts out Scooby Doo. Uh, Simple Plan did that one. That was that was like the one that I remember. That was like, was that the What's New Scooby Doo? Yeah, What's New yeah. Scooby Doo? Good. That See? was a good opening. <laughs> that pop. The value banger. of a good intro. I also like the X Men Seven intro is great too. Oh, like, it's I such a great I like mix. It. I was like, yeah, this is tight. So bro. good. Oh yeah. I don't ever skip. Sure. I don't ever skip that intro. I'm like, nope. This is too good. And yeah, the belief, no, there's, like, there's value. There's value to it. It's crazy that that sounds a lot like Whitney, the Whitney Houston song. I'm your baby tonight. It sounds a lot. Wow. Like, it's a very sim similar, like melodic. I've not, not thought of that. That's so I'm, dope. I think they got inspired off of that song. It's very, if you listen to, if you listen to her track dubbed over the mm. X-Men intro, you're like, oh shit. Interesting. Yeah, had not had not made that connection. I'm definitely gonna listen to that. Oh, it's so cool. And then for me, y'all. So I, I I've been watching Shogun. Oh my god! If y'all haven't been watching this, it's basically Game of Thrones set in Japan. Man, it is such a great show. I mean, Hiroyuki Sonata is the one who pretty much is in charge of this show because I'll be honest with you guys. Like he's been producing, he's on the front lines of the writing team too. Like he's been heavily involved, but he's playing the main character in this series. And essentially Japan is, kind of, there's this sort of conflict going on with the leadership inside of Japan. And Hiroyuki Sonata's character is, they're trying to essentially kill him and get rid of him off of the council and um, yeah, we're following that whole conflict and I'm really loving it. Uh, I, I think it's one of the best shows to come out of FX's catalog in a very long time. The production value is just beyond like normal TV shows and the way that it just gets Japanese culture and themes so perfectly. Like you could tell that this was very meticulously researched and made to feel authentic and the acting across the table is just incredible i mean there's treachery there's action there's unexpected moments and deaths it does remind me of game of thrones like i hate i, I hate to like say oh it, it's the japanese game of thrones but that's very much what it reminds me of there's treachery there's politics there's great dialogue powerful dialogue exchanges between characters every single episode just like game of thrones so it, it very much has that game of thrones vibe to it it's very very good on hulu i think it's on about to be on episode nine and the things that happen are just unforeseen in this show so just like game of thrones where it was like 
oh, you know, Ned Stark died in the first season. It, it's very much that's the same kind of crazy things that are happening. I love the show so far. That we just just saw like a big character die. So it was like, oh my God, like just like Game of Thrones, I didn't see that coming. The so stakes are high. There, score, like oh, within the last week, there was two, two oh, major yeah, characters. I was like, I was I like, was like did, I, did I spoil? I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, you're yeah. good. No, but I mean, like, there was like two. Thighs. I'm like, yo. <laughs> yeah, there's been some big deaths to like, and I didn't even see some of this coming. So they, they really know what they're doing. It's very sly, very slick show. I'm seeing some complaints and I understand them 100% because I was a little confused. I do think it's a little odd that the Portuguese language is like English. So it's like they, they're speaking Portuguese, but like we understand it as English. I don't know what was the catalyst behind that decision. So I had to do a little research and see why. But I, I did find that a little confusing at first. I was like, are they? Oh, so they're speaking Portuguese, but it's English to us. I, I, it's, I think what they were trying to kind of get at was like oh this is like an, a language we would understand like but i don't know i i again i don't know what the inspiration was behind that but otherwise i'm loving the show loving it so far and it's based off of a book too i gotta go check that book out um but so far i'm loving that and then yesterday caught an amc early access of the ministry of ungentlemanly warfare the new guy Ritchie movie with henry cavill ala richson uh, Aza Gonzalez, Henry Golding. It's a very fun movie. I mean, seriously, it's like it's basically like Guy Ritchie's Inglorious Bastards. Somebody put it perfectly. I seen it in a tweet. It's kind of like a crossover of Ocean's Eleven and Inglorious Bastards because you've got this kind of espionage, covert operation happening, as well as Henry Cavill's team trying to essentially destroy some German ships, but they end up stealing the ships instead it's a very cool kind of like covert operation but at the same time there's this nazi killing action very fun lots of comedy it very much is a good time at the movies and it's what i love about it is this guy richie at his most comfortable i feel like the aladdins and the sherlock holmes series not that those movies were necessarily bad but they're not really like <clears throat> guy richie you know what i mean it's like it's kind of like commercial this is guy richie this is like him doing his his stick and i love that i love his comedy gangster stuff feels like we get that energy same energy here but like i said it was like they said hey make your version of inglorious bastards and he made it henry cavill's so fucking funny like i honestly i was like i i'm sad that he got robbed of the superman thing but maybe it might be the best thing for his career to go start doing some other stuff because everything else i've seen him in post superman has been great uh, he was really good in um, Witcher. He was great in that series. He's been he was great in this. I've liked him so far. So I'm like, yeah, I'm really happy to see him having fun. Alan Richson. The whole cast just seems to really have good chemistry with each other. So honestly, I'm like, yeah. If you haven't seen, if you're gonna see it, I think it's coming out this week. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is so much goddamn fun. Lots of action. Lots of not. Lots of Nazi killing, y'all. <laughs> like lots of. We love to see it blowing dudes heads off. So I'm like, man, I love it. It gets brutal in parts and man, just a great, great film. And you know, it makes me, it, it made me like think of recently, um, Argyle. I was like, I, I wonder if it had a little bit more of this energy, would it have worked out a little bit more, but man, so good ministry of ungentlemanly warfare. Y'all put that on your radar. If it's not yet. Because it's just a fun time at the movies. Like, honestly, just fun, man. Fun. Uh, As I a saw... Guy Ritchie truther, I love to hear it, man. <laughs> honestly, this this excites me. Like, I, I'm a big Guy Ritchie fan. So it it's truly, like, comforting to see this, like, style of his back. Like fully in control, you know. Like I just, I like, I, I'm excited. I'm, you got me hyped now. It's on my hair. It's on the radar. Cause like, okay, Guy Ritchie, like when he did King Arthur and and Aladdin, I was like, this ain't really Guy Ritchie. But then when he did The Gentleman after those movies, I was like, okay, he's back. Like he's, I even like that one. Um, what was that Jason Statham one called? I even like that. I was like, this is fun. Oh, Wrath of Man, that was right. fun. Fun yeah. little heist movie. I, and I he also had uh, Operation Fortune, which I didn't see yet. But 
Yeah, that was him. Operation. Yeah, Ford Hugh Grant, Aubrey Plaza. Oh, I yep. remember that one. Which it's so weird how his movies kind of fly off the radar, but they're they're great. <laughs> like yeah. he's a good director. He, I was just he's, he's just a fun guy. He's been like really busy, and in between all that, he did he did that war movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, the uh, Covenant. Yeah, what the Covenant. That? I didn't I didn't check that like, one in out. between all that. Yeah, was that good? That came out last year. Actually, I didn't see it. Yeah, um, I didn't see it either. No, because it looked cool, but I just wasn't really feeling the war thing at that moment in time. I just wasn't really vibing. But did y'all watch Roadhouse with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal? Did not, did not catch it. Oh, there's some I, fire uh, action in it. It's not. Okay. I don't know. It's weird to say this, but the original was a little better. Ooh. But Ooh. I will I say, say it was it was fine. Going from like Legend of Korra to X Men, I've just been kind of like sleeping on stuff so i'm i'm happy i caught up with shogun though so legend of cora <laughs> i love it good stuff good kasami stuff. forever kasami let's just, go but the biggest <laughs> smile on my face as they like held hands into the sunset i, I was like yes. so as much as i like yeah. that in pairing welcome as much as I like on my pairing, team i kind of hate how it came out of nowhere yeah. And this is a conversation for another day, but I, hey, seriously, I, that feels like meddling. It feels like the studios didn't want them to do that. That's what it feels but they, like. They like, wanted to. It was like they, yeah. at the core of their being, wanted that to happen. But there, were, like, there were, there were, there were gay inklings throughout there was the sprinklings. season. Okay, there was gazes. There Ileana. was a, you know, there was a Hansel and Gretel crumb trail. Yep. But yep. it was there. There was chemistry. Y'all picking up crumbs because there was like <laughs> we, had we had to. We had to. Hey, you, no, know, hey. you know all the queer crumbs it... we had to pick up at that time. <laughs> Ileana, there was a couple <laughs> glances. They even had the uh the blushing when they looked at each other a couple times. I was like, I was like, did you guys see that? They blush at each other constantly. Yes. yes. And that's that on that. So, G. Kobe, no, nah, I still haven't watched Fallout, man. I, I, I got to watch it. I've been seeing clips, and I'm very intrigued, but I feel like I'm not. I, I never played the Fallout game, so I don't, like, I'm just going to go in blind. Man, I played I like Ella Parnell. New Vegas. <laughs> She's great. Four, the, uh, the little Switch game where you build the little shelter and stuff. Fallout, right. little shelter, I think is what it's called. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love this series so much. I cannot wait to watch the show, but I've just been kind of busy watching movies. YouTube video mm -hmm. essays and other stuff. So yeah. I, I'll get on it as soon as I can. But y'all, we're oh, yeah. moving to the main meat and potatoes of the show. Yes, we're moving into the... Uh-oh, you on uh, mute, low? <laughs> All right, it's been a while. But um, if you haven't been here before, we always kick it off with the box office pulse. Let's check that real quick. A24's latest film, Civil War, the divisive new film by Alex Garland, opens to a really strong 25.7 million domestically. Um, if you guys haven't seen the film, it it's very, very disturbing and very, very brutal. But it paints a uh, hauntingly, like too close to home picture of, of a feature that we may or may not be pretty close to it's um it's a it's a tough watch but it's immaculately directed by alex garland i, th I thought it was a fine film um godzilla x kong my titan homeboys that i kind of like kind of i'm um, whatever about sometimes they hold firm in second with 15.5 million dollars bringing their worldwide wide haul to 436.5 million dollars across the globe uh, the top five gets rounded out by Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, Kung Fu Panda 4, and Dune round uh, round two, part two, um, which is awesome. You love to see it. I actually saw Dune part two again um, a couple nights ago in uh, at AMC. I, I, third time. It's a comfort film for me at this point. Um, uh, Hans Zimmer's piece, uh, A Time of Quiet Between the Storms. It's pretty much the love theme between Chani and and Madib and oh my lord my heart soars anyways uh <laughs> so this is a pretty interesting top five i didn't think civil war was an open as well i actually thought godzilla x kong would would stay on top of the box office but um it opens strong and much to a lot of people's dismay some people hate the film some people love it uh leo i know you enjoyed it man what, what's your overall thoughts on how well it's doing at the box office yeah you know civil war i think 
I understand some of the criticisms that people have for the film, um, especially with it not taking a side, nor is it really explaining the war that much of the movie for that. So I think that that brought a lot of people in. They were kind of like, what's going on with this civil war? So I, I'm kind of not surprised because y'all, when I was there, every seat was full. I went to the early access screening. Every damn seat was full. It was packed. So I, I'm like, okay, people are, this is a, a big topic. So I'm glad to see A24 performing well at the box office. Remember they had that discussion about more mainstream blockbuster-ish movies. Not that this really is a blockbuster, but they're stepping in the right direction with some of their campaigns and such. And so good for them. I'm glad that they're bringing their top and box offices now and stuff like that. Um, yeah, as for the rest, hey, Godzilla X Kong still raking in the dough. Love to see it. Uh, still haven't seen Ghostbusters, y'all. Kung Fu Panda 4 was a lot of fun, though. And Doom Part 2, I've seen three times now as well. And I really, really enjoyed it. Ileana was down there talking like three times. I've seen you. And I'm like, it was more Hello. like comfort movie. Well, comfort. I, I, I can't. I was not. It was. I was not comforted. Like it's a good movie, but I was. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it's a good I just, movie. I was just more chilled. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. But that's me. Like, I was. I was rewatching part one, and then I went and saw it for a third time, and I'm just. I just got so engrossed in their whole world of Fremen, and like that whole first half. I just love. I love mm. seeing like the 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 love blossom between Chani and and Paul. Um, it, like I said, that score just gets to me. Like she's like showing him how to do the water filter yeah. thing, and he's like smiling at her, and she's like, "Stop yeah. looking at me like that." It's just like, ah, oh, like that. That's, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. And like, yeah, like the scene where the Harkonnens start flying. It's like, oh, it's just like there's so many exciting Dude, moments. Like, you know, it, like, I think the first half of that movie is probably my favorite half because the last half is just depressing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, and then it gets what, yeah, you know, rightfully Austin, so. Like it's yeah. it's right, it's right to yeah, do. And then it, Austin I get Butler it. starts licking his knife Jesus and splitting throats, and yeah, he it gets unhinged. <laughs> it gets real unhinged, and lo it loses me a little bit at the end. I, it truly did because I was just so like into that, especially like you know that whole oh let's let's fly up and they just float up, and I literally went. Ah. Yes, but seriously, so that, that, that's, that the thing that I found comforting was that first act. It's just so much fun. Javier Bardem, my <laughs> son, Oh man, <laughs> every time I crack up, every time, like he's just his faith is unquestioned. Like Javier Bardem really ate. He really bodied that. He said, "I am a Spaniard." Yeah, he went all in and now. Let's <laughs> son Galib. I'm like, good grief, man. This man is going in. Listen. <laughs> did you uh, did you see Civil War, Ileana? I have not. I don't know if I have the stomach for it right okay. now. I don't know. Because I've been yeah. seeing those trailers and I'm like, damn, am I in the headspace? Oh, man. It's brutal. I'm, I'm, the, I'm... the world right now. <laughs> You know, I wasn't ready. It's a lot. Either, so. it's, a lot. It, it's it's like I don't know if I'm in like the headspace for something so heavy. Or I want to watch it, but I'm not in a rush to watch it because of that. Like it's just it's I got I love Alex Garland. Yeah, no, I know I saw that comment. <laughs> Kobe, <laughs> like that's not exactly it, but yes, it's part of it. Kobe. Someone check in on Tom Holland. We need a wellness check. No, I think he's doing just fine. I saw some yeah, paparazzi good. photos. They're doing great. But hold on, y'all. <laughs> you didn't see the other. photos of him at the Challengers premiere. Now, he wasn't about to sit up there and be there. Now. And I don't blame him. I ain't got no damn premiere. Good Lord. kissing on my girl's neck in the movie. Oh, I'm going to let y'all go do that. I'm going to be over no. here prepping for the next Spider-Man. He's like, I am the, the white boy of the month. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah guys um uh just to kind of sum it all up and tie it in a bow because we are a little behind um we are not fully back at the box office but this is promising um we got two pretty strong tent poles uh pulling their weight right now it's not nothing to harken back to like 2019 2018 times of cinema but it's nice to see some double digit uh millions mm -hmm. here and uh godzilla x kong is doing pretty well uh, it looks like civil war should do fine as well so Let's keep it trucking. Joker fully audio finally drops its trailer. I'll be honest, guys. 
Um, and it's not because I didn't want to, and it's not because I don't like Todd Phillips or anything, but I just missed Joker when it came out. I still haven't seen it. I still haven't You're seen fine. it. Yes, I know. I'm going to get the eyes. I'm going to get the You're eyes. You're fine, Lo. It. It's okay. <laughs> no, no, look, so for that reason, for that reason, I didn't, I didn't watch the trailer, but go ahead, it, guys. Whatever you guys want to... Uh, any thoughts, Ileana? How did you feel about the show? Did you see? Did you? Are you a fan of the original Joker, or were you kind of lukewarm on? So it? here's the thing: I like the original Joker. I don't like the effect it had. <laughs> Not a fan of, out of its impact, but the film itself very good, very haunting. But it's one of those movies that I saw it once in the theater. And I'm like, that was great. I had fun. I'm never watching that again because <laughs> it's just it's heavy. It's intense and it's just it's it's a lot and I'm like you know it's not it's definitely not a comfort film so I have not seen it since I saw it in the movie theater but you know I respect it I love Joaquin Phoenix's win for that movie um, but yeah the, it, it could have been better uh, I think story wise it could have been a little, run a tighter ship but that's just my take on it I still think it's good I am marginally like more excited for this one simply because of the musical aspect. That is not something that worries me. It is something that excites me because I think this is a version of the Joker that should really, it, it has ample opportunity to lean into the fantasy of it all. And with Lady Gaga, you know, on, on that slate, I'm all in. I love musicals. I think more musicals should be on the big screen. So it's definitely kind of a, you know, best of both worlds moment for me, at least. Like, I love a good, you know, supervillain moment, plus musicals, plus Lady Gaga. I think it has the potential to be great and cringe in a way that it is self-aware. I, I really, I'm really, really hoping, I'm hoping and praying that it really gives me, it, it has to commit to the bit go all in or it's not good enough. Like get just, if you're doing a musical, we're committing to the musical. We're, we're here. We're going to do this. We're not going to just do, you know, just a couple little bits here and there and be done with it. That's I'm, I am sat. Yeah. I was going to say, um, I am going to watch Joker at some point before I see this film. So we'll see where I'm at, but yeah, uh, that's just the concept alone is, it's intriguing to me. I, I am also on the side, Ileana. I think, I think musicals are okay in my book, as long as they're well-made and they tell a good story. So, Leo, how do you feel about this trailer? And were you a fan of the first film? I really like the first film. First, I want to say, see you later, Laser. Thanks for joining us tonight. Bye. And, um, yeah, I really like that first, first film a lot. I do think it stumbles a little with its messaging a bit. I think that it kind of... It, there's there's a little bit of a misfire in some of the things it's trying to say, I think. But it's lost in the it, sauce. Yeah, I, I'm like, okay, we're talking about a villain, but we're trying to kind of play the mental health thing, and it kind of didn't quite connect how I think we wanted it to, but at the same time, I thought it was a very well-made movie. I thought Joaquin Phoenix was great in the role. Like you said, Ileana, it's haunting. It's very chilling. The things that do happen in Joker, I really liked it a lot. Um, this is beyond my expectations to be honest with you i thought this musical idea was a bad idea i was like ah hell i i don't know i i just was like why we gotta incorporate the music but i love lady gaga so that was a plus and then just seeing this trailer like yeah it brings you into this new world really that makes it feel like these two are these crazy people in their own little world going on and they have this chemistry and connection that nobody else really has around them so I really like where we're going with this. It kind of feels like we're going to go into an, another world with them. Like you were saying, Ileana, very fantastical feeling. It, I like it. I, and I'm excited for the singing now. Like I, I just saw the trailer and I'm like, this looks way better than the first one, which I really like the first one. So, I mean, to see this beyond my expectations, it looked great. It does. It really does look better than the it first one. Awesome. I don't lie. There's a I'm, vision I, here. There's yeah. a vision. That's, that's guys, I think, what it has going for it. If you can't tell, I'm stroking my imaginary beard. Color me yes, intrigued. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm here. I'm here for the ride. I'm here for the trip. <laughs> but seriously, um, at some point, I will watch Joker uh, before this comes out. So we'll see. Hopefully, I join the bandwagon. 
And Leo, I'm going to let you take a lead on this, man. CinemaCon 2024 just took place this past weekend over at Caesars Palace in Viva Las Vegas. Uh, Leo, break down the big news we had this week, man. Yeah, so we had all the studios come up with their own uh, panels. Everybody had a panel. So WB Lionsgate, Universal, Paramount, and Disney all had panels at CinemaCon. Now, you guys, of course, let us know which announcements you like the most down in the comments. But WB kicked it off with that Joker 2 trailer involved with their panel. They also had new footage shown from Furiosa, Mickey 17, and Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, super exciting. And M. Night Shyamalan showed footage of The Watchers. So his daughter's movie, the movies that she's directing, and then his upcoming movie, Trap, as well with... His other daughter actually has like an acting role in this one. So M. Night Shyamalan kind of had his own little mini panel during this all. But also uh, Lionsgate had a presentation too with um, developing projects. They've got the Naruto live action movie happening. They've got a Monopoly movie happening with Margot Robbie producing. So that'll be exciting kind of. They want that Barbie energy. They really wanted to get that and capture that same uh, energy there. And then they have footage from Borderlands, The Crow, and Ballerina as well. The new Ana de Armas movie in the John Wick universe, which they just confirmed at CinemaCon. John Wick's going to be in it, so that's cool. Uh, he's going to appear, but this takes place between the third and the fourth movie. So that death that the... Oop, I hope I didn't spoil for anybody, but the one of the deaths at the end of four is kind of left up in the air because it takes place between three and four. And then they close their panel with the first look at the Michael movie. Now, Universal has some more footage as well. They had Despicable Me 4, Twisters, Wolfman, and Wild Robot footage to show, along with a new Five Nights at Freddy's announcement and Wicked footage. Uh, Ar um, Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo were actually at the con, so that was cool. And then Paramount, man, I don't know, guys. Them and Disney have my favorite panels because uh, Paramount, confirmed the Transformers G.I. Joe live-action crossover movie. They also talked a little bit about some Avatar movies. They said there's going to be more animated movies from Avatar The Last Airbender universe, which is great. Love to get some more animation out of there. They showed some Sonic 3 movie, or some Sonic 3 movie footage, and then Gladiator 2, they showed like five minutes of action sequences from that film. And then Disney closed it out, y'all, with a hell of a, I mean... Just a hell of a panel with 15 minutes of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes shown, 35 minutes of Inside Out, and a Marvel presentation which included some logos from Thunderbolts, Captain America 4, Deadpool and Wolverine, and Fantastic Four. And they had footage from Deadpool and Wolverine of them like bickering. They mentioned Secret Wars in it. Super funny little bit that it sounded like. And then uh, Cap 4 had a little footage as well as Mufasa, the Lion King, which I'm be real, y'all, that... If they didn't tell me that it was a steal from Mufasa, I would think it was just from The Lion King. It doesn't look any different. But I don't know. Listen, I, I didn't like that Lion King movie at all. But you know what? That's the conversation for another day. And then they closed their panel with the presentation. The Rock showed up. They did like a Moana 2 opening of that footage. And then, yeah, closed it down with a couple other announcements. Daisy Ridley's got a new movie coming out, and yeah, it was a hell of a cinema con. Wish I could have gone, but man, it sounded like it was hype. To me, it sounds like cinema con's almost kind of taking a page from the SDCC book, trying to get it a little more involved, trying to have more big announcements, get people excited for the footage they have coming up this year. So, y'all, I'm pretty excited, man. Like, lots of great, exciting announcements to come out of cinema con. I was about also, to say, it definitely uh, feels very Hall H. What Hall H used to be is what, yes. that's the migration happening to CinemaCon. Very, very interesting. Yeah, it has a very Hall H type of, like, let's show our slate. But I think what's going to happen is it's going to be like CinemaCon is showing this year, and then SDCC is a, a, a moment to capture what's coming up. So I think what's going to end up happening is studios will go to CinemaCon, show their slate, of movies coming up this year, and then they'll go to SDCC and say, hey, let's iron out the schedule for phase five, phase six, blah, blah, blah. Talk about the future projects that are coming up. I was going to say, apparently I can't spell. I had to fix the slides real quick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> CinemaCon was not spelled correctly, but uh, hey, there's dude. a lot of good news here. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, oh, that's exciting. One for you, Lo, that I know you, you're happy about is the TMNT. There's going to be a live action R rated movie with uh, based on the last Ronin storyline. And that's oh, that's yeah. gonna be tight, bro. That's going to be wild. Um, I'm not ready for that emotionally, but, you know, I'm here for it. Um, any highlights you wanted to get into, Ileana? Anything that you that sparked your interest? I think the, the, what sparked my interest the most was that Joker 2 trailer and that Wicked News. I'm very, I enjoy John and Shu. I enjoyed In the Heights. I am like, I, I don't know. I don't know want to say a Wicked fan, like, like, cause there's some people who are much bigger fans than I am, but I am so ready for a big budget, like another big budget Broadway musical adaptation. So not a huge fan of the whole part one, part two, like vibe of it, but I'm really excited for Wicked. And I think it's going to be very fun. So yeah, those are the things that really stood out to me, weirdly enough, because I thought I would be more excited about like the Deadpool Wolverine stuff. But I think I'm just letting that, I want that to be as much of a surprise as possible because so much has come out about it already. So I haven't like really dug into all every bit of news about it just because of that. Like I want to go into the movie theater as like surprised as possible to really get my enjoyment out of it. So yeah, definitely Wicked and Joker. Um, I'm hype. Heck yeah. And um, I don't have too much to add onto that. I mean, I'm, I'm excited for Gladiator. Gladiator. I mean, that cast guys. Freaking Denzel Washington, Paul Mezcal, Pedro Pascual. Like, best come on. picture. Like, <laughs> like, come on. Start the best come picture on, campaign. So I, I'm here for that. I'm here for the Wolfman. Um, this is exciting, man. Uh, I, I I can't wait. I, I wish. I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. Maybe I can go to Cine CinemaCon next year. We'll, we'll we'll figure it out, guys. But um, uh oh, they spoiled a cameo in Wicked. See. But you know what? I stay, I stay, I stay blind. I stay dumb. I, I you know, <laughs> I stay blissfully ignorant on these spoilers. I read the and real, headlines and dip. <laughs> real quick, what's up, T3 Media Studios? Uh, Chris and the villain, welcome us back. Um, I guested on his show a week or two ago. That was pretty fun. Thanks for having me, Chris. Um, let's keep it trucked, and we do got a couple more things to get to here. Another trailer dropped this week that I was, I think is highly more anticipated than Joker was because I wasn't even like the biggest fan of like X and stuff. But you know what? We are here, guys. The highly anticipated. Oh, and I'm skipping buttons. Oh my God. I don't know what button I press. Hold on. Uh, the highly anticipated. Like, <laughs> no one, that nigga fan of X is that? Hold on now. X is Good. Hold on. Hold on. No, before, we, before we put me on the fire, hold on. The highly anticipated third film of T West slasher trilogy, Maxine, finally dropped its tailor, starring Mia Goth and a slew of awesome characters this time around, including one Kevin Bacon. Um, the trailer looks amazing, guys. Look, don't hear what I'm not saying. I, I wrote a really extensive art uh review on Pearl and me comparing Pearl and X and what they did well. Because Pearl, I actually enjoyed a lot more than X. Not that I didn't like X. It's just I thought Pearl was just visually and story thematically was a lot stronger, in my opinion. I kind of felt like X was a glorified grindhouse -y homage to, like, 70s flicks, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But it didn't go much deeper than that, and Pearl did. So that was my only thing. It's not that I don't like X, but as a whole, I think... As a fan of TOS, I'm going to enjoy the whole thing. I think seeing them back to back to back, I'm going to watch X, I'm going to watch Pearl, and I'm going to watch Maxine when it comes out. I think this is just so fun. It's very rare we get this type of shared universe style and this style of film. So this is awesome. Um, but Ileana, it sounds like you have some thoughts for me. Um, are you? It sounds like you're a fan of X? I do. I enjoy X. I enjoy Pearl. Um, I think what's really interesting with this trilogy is that yes, they're all connected. Yes, there's kind of like, I guess, a, an ongoing theme. But at the same time, each one is satisfying like a different need or a different want for a slasher movie. So X is the more like, you know, yes, it doesn't dive as deep. Yes, it's more of a homage, but X is just kind of bringing us back to, you know, the the old school things of a slasher but being really stylistic with it, injecting a little bit of, of something new with Ty West style. So I think 
that's like the perfect opening to that trilogy. And then, we, you know, we, we see Pearl in X. So that makes sense. Like to me, it just, it kind of flows and makes sense to dive into Pearl's backstory with Pearl, obviously. So I, I enjoy both for what they are. I think um, Pearl as more of a, like a, a more focused character study, that's what it is. And that's what it's great at. And X is more of a, just like an overall, let's just fuck around and find out. X is Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm very intrigued with the the twist that Ty West is giving Maxine because I honestly had no idea how he was going to handle Maxine. And, and to be honest, like I was blissfully ignorant on how we're going to keep the slasher theme with this same, like as a sequel rather than a prequel with the same character that survived, like our final girl from X becoming like, you know, a star. Like we've gone from, I want to be a star. I'm a star to I'm actually a star or becoming a star. You feel me? And I feel like this is going to be an interesting culmination of her rise to actual stardom and then fall. So I'm intrigued. I'm I'm excited. I'm hype. Uh, Definitely like some of the best horror that we've seen in the past couple of years. And, you know, I love the aesthetic of the trailer. It's so 80s. Like, this, like, got the fuzzy VHS vibe, the dirty underbelly of Hollywood we're looking at. And um, Twitter, film Twitter is already on it, but there's a lot of giallo here. There's some giallo Italian style horror with the, 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 the new uh, serial killer we have and the shots of the knife and the blood. And of course, Maxine herself is very, like, sexy and promiscuous. So, I think- oh, and we got Halsey too. That we, we cannot forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited and, for um, I'm excited. I think this might be the best one out of all three. We'll see. Leo, how are you? On, are you lukewarm? Are you hot on the trailer? You vibing? Oh, I'm a 10 out of 10, baby. I mean, I loved every single movie in this installment. I love it. I mean, Pearl was, a, like, a, like you said, Ileana, a geek character study with these kind of evil Disney, Wizard of Oz type of vibe. Loved it, man. And then uh, I love X. Tradi- like, it's just a great callback to traditional slasher films. You know, throw people in this crazy situation and there's a killer on the loose. Ends up being this fucking old woman. Like, it- it's just a great dude. I just, I love X, man. I love X. I love Pearl. And I'm going to say something very controversial here. So hear me out. I think if Maxine hits the nail on the head like X and Pearl did for me, I love Scream. I hate what happened with Melissa. So I think this might be my like favorite modern horror uh, trilogy to come out like post two K, post twenty ten. Really, I, I I love it. That might be valid. <laughs> like, that I'm might like, be valid. I'm lo- I, I I've loved Pearl and X. I've watched them both a couple of times now, and I really really like them. I love where it's going. Like you said, Leona, it's like, you've got the kind of, I want to be a star to I'm kind of a star to I am a star. And I love this arc of character for this, for the Mia goth character. And man, I'm loving it. Y'all like I've been, I've been waiting for Maxine since the end of X where Maxine at. (laughs) So I'm excited, man. I am so excited. And I feel like this trailer has been like, Film Twitter has been salivating for this trailer for a while because, like, they finished wrapping. I think they wrapped last year, and we were wondering where's Maxine. We're... So, yeah, it is here, and I cannot wait. Can't wait. And last one, y'all, before we get out of here, um, Andor writer Bo Will uh, Willimon, if I'm saying that right, is set to co-write Star Wars: Dawn of the Jedi with James Mangold. He also helped create House of Cards, which I didn't get into. But I loved Andor. Ooh. Andor was arguably the greatest Star Wars show to some people. Um, definitely one of the t- the best um, in Star Wars TV history for sure. Um, powerful, you know, uh, what do you call it? Espionage, dark storytelling, especially for the Star Wars banner. Um, it was really cool seeing that side of the rebellion. Um, kind of just picking up where Rogue One left off, Andor did. And with James Mangold, a director that I love, even though I didn't love Della Destiny, I think this is going to be interesting. Um, it's really cool to see a completely different time period, getting getting away from the Skywalker saga, something I know Leo has been really, really wanting the franchise to do. Um, I'm excited. 
I, I think this is this could be a this could be a winner for the Star Wars team, the universe. Um, but we'll see. This is just news about the writer and director so far. So, Leo, I know this is something you've wanted for a while, man. What are your thoughts? I think it'll be great. I mean, it sounds like it could be cool. I just Star Wars needs a win, bro. And and like I I like the Soka, but I didn't I. I didn't find myself loving a soak all the way through there a couple episodes. I was like, woof, come on, man. I need us to get a dub out of Star Wars. Between this and the Alkalite, I need them to be like an absolute dub because I felt like Star Wars, ever since the rise of Skywalker, we've had a roller coaster like effect where it's like, oh, I get a project that I really love, like Mando season one. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Legends with the anime stuff. What no, that's, visions. that's legends, visions, visions, visions. Um, yeah, I love visions, like, but then you have Book of Boba Fett, Mando. Season I like Boba Book of Boba Fett, Fett. <laughs> I didn't like Book of Boba Fett, man. And then what's this? <laughs> what they what they got going on right now with the clones? I, I oh, the that. bad batch. Ah, I, li I like the bad batch, but that's just me, though. That's just me, though. I feel it. I, I just think we need a, a big win, like, Star yeah. Wars needs a win desperately andor was really really good too i loved andor but then it's just been like a roller coaster it's been like love andor mm, obi-wan was okay oh i love mando season one and two ah season three was okay oh well i loved it eh, but this is okay I, I want i want a couple of dubs in a row i want this alkalite whatever else with the mando grogu movie i need them to be like straight up dubbies man like i need this i need this franchise back bro i need it back but do you like you, you did enjoy Andor, right? Oh, I loved Andor. Yeah, okay. I like Andor so, a lot. I thought that was a good kind of like turning the ship around moment in mm -hmm. my opinion. So hopefully, uh, Ileana. Yeah, Andor. On the I, new I, Dawn I, of think, the Jedi? I think anything with having to do with anyone who worked on Andor, it's good. It's got it's gonna have me excited. Like yes, James Mangold was you know not at the top of his game. Let's say with Dial of Destiny, but. I'm sorry, he still made Logan, so, <laughs> you, you yeah. know? Yes. I, I think this is a great team. This is ha this has some potential for some, like, I am a Last Jedi truther. I think this has some potential to bring us back to something really fresh, but really, really just rich for the Star Wars universe. I think that's what we've been missing. We've been just kind of, the last few projects since Rise of Skywalker has been just kind of peddling and recycling a lot of things from, from the universe. And there hasn't been enough newness to it, to it. So definitely, I think Dawn of the Jedi, even though it's, I'm not gonna call it prequel, but I think it's gonna be some a really, really rich lore drop that I think the universe has really been needing. Um, so yeah, definitely this has this and an acolyte, they got potential to have sauce. Absolutely. And I think like I'm not sure, Leo, is this High Republic era? Because I, I get kind of confused with the whole old republic, high republic. But I mean, I think this is like just kind of to sum up what both of you guys are kind of saying. It's like there's a freshness here of just showing us something new that I think Star Wars fans across the world will enjoy, I hope. Um, like I said, I, I, I like James Mangold, even though I didn't like Della Destiny, but you know, I trust him as a filmmaker. <laughs> right. I didn't like that, but I, but see, I love Ford V Ferrari. So it's like, okay, we've got kind of a trade for trade going, but yeah. I mean, and he also did a, was it walk the line? He has a great yeah, filmography, yeah, he's got like, a great filmography with, with some misses in there. I mean, <laughs> yeah, with, <laughs> miss or two, a couple misses in there with, but uh, you know, I just, it was like you were saying to Leona, I, I I'm with you. I want the Laura rich stuff, but. No more Skywalker shit, man. No, like, no more Skywalker shit. Let go. <laughs> I, I, I just let I, it die. Let go of the past. You're holding on. Yes, let it die. <laughs> I love. I you love just rewatch the old stuff. stuff. Jesus. I love Darth Vader. I love Anakin. I love Luke. I love those stories, but we just got to pull back, man. And see, that's that's one thing about Mando, which I hate to say this because I love the end of Mando season. I loved it so much. But it kind of was nice that the first season was like away and removed from that stuff. It was like, okay, it was carving its own path. It was it was going in its own lane. And then it was like, okay, here goes Ahsoka Tano. Okay, here goes Luke Skywalker, which is fine. But like in the grand scheme of it all, the first season was like its own thing. And it was like, 
hey, this is kind of cool, set in that era post episode six, but hey, we still got some lore from that. But then we got to kind of bring the, the the Star Wars back into it. And I was kind of like, okay, I, I like it, but in retrospect, it kind of it, it hurt the show, I think. Um, but I, I, I'm just looking forward to being in a new era too, getting something fresh, new. We have been in this era. I'm really looking forward to this, man. Something new, something refreshing. Yeah, um, I think Don, um, Don of the Jedi as a concept could be so like House of Dragons coded or something. Like right. that, it could be something really, really rich right. to dive into. That's so actually a good reference. Don of the Republic is the era. Okay, cool. Um, and also, I mean, look, I don't want to be a hater or anything, but you know, like the Obi Wan Kenobi show. As much as I, I liked seeing Hayden Christensen and stuff, it kind of feels like they were beating a dead horse at that point. And um, Ahsoka didn't help because I, I liked Ahsoka, but I didn't love it. Um, but yeah, we gotta like Kylo so so eloquently put it. Let it die. Let the past die. <laughs> Let um, it die, man. And listen, I'm down to revisit. I'm down to even having them in the Mando <laughs> stuff now, like because that's where it is. But I'm talking about with this new stuff. Like let's let's tell some new stories. You know? Let's yes. Some new stuff. Yes. And that's actually why I'm excited for the Acolyte, which will be coming very soon. Very soon. All right, guys, we are hitting the end of the show here. And thank you so much for all for joining us. We had Chris Popeye, Fatal J, G. Kobe, Arthur. Thank you guys for coming. Laser, Joe Sun. Y'all, thank you so much for coming. Lo, let the people know where they can find you, what you got coming up on your platforms, man. Yes, yes. You can follow me on Twitter and Letterboxd, even though I haven't updated my letterbox in a long time. <laughs> At Marcellus Durden. I, still, I I got a lot of great lists and stuff you can see in my favorites and stuff like that, but it's not up to date. Um, I'm a proud editor and critic for The Cinema Spot. Follow us on all socials at The Cinema Spot and TheCinemaSpot.com. Um, like I said, I wrote a, it's probably one of my favorite reviews. I wrote a really heartfelt, passionate review about Pearl on the site. And most recently, I'm lagging on my A24 stuff, but I do have Problemisa and Love Lies Bleeding in the queue. Um, keep an eye out for that and follow us at The Cinema Spot and TheCinemaSpot.com. The Cinema Spot and the cinemaspot.com. Follow them over there for that coverage, y'all. Ileana, what you got coming up? Well, you can follow me on Twitter and Letterboxd at Captain Melendez. And what I got coming up is Geekly Goods Live every Sunday. Every Sunday, guys. Be back here. And y'all, man, I'm just getting over being sick. I've, I had a break. It's been a lot, y'all, but we got some stuff coming up. I've got a couple of short reviews coming up for Civil War and for Challengers, which Challengers was so goddamn good. If y'all haven't watched it, man, oh my goodness, that is a horny ass movie. Talk about horny. Uh, that's a horny fucking movie, okay? But yes, very good movie uh, with Zendaya and Mike Faced and one other dude in there. <laughs> Y'all, it's been a long day. I know the dude's name, but I just forget his Josh name. Josh O'Connor. Josh O'Connor, thank you. Um, respect like, for the man. Listen, I'm I tired. said one like, other dude. What, my, my one other <laughs> homie over that here. Is uh, the, the, he is in so many. I saw that man in person at Cannes two years ago. What? And then we all saw his butt. Yes, because he was in, um, oh my God, this movie by Eva Husson called mother's day and we all saw full frontal nudity with him in the theater he was like two rows back <laughs> and i was like oh, oh my god good movie though brilliant performance yeah. but wow was it awkward <laughs> you wanted to be up there to see his dangling out i will <laughs> never forget this man's name because of that <laughs> he's beautiful he's Gosh, very nice very bad, nice gentleman oh Oh, he he he's beautiful, Ileana. He's he's yes, beautiful. He is. Yes, I ha he's he's beautiful in that ugly English guy way, you know. Oh, he got the kind okay. of goofy, got the goofy, he's goofy. Look. Exactly, he's just kind of goofy. such a backhanded compliment, right? Like well, in an ugly like, English, you know, guy that cover right match? Look. Yeah, well, like that. <laughs> I'm like dude from the bear. Yeah, like, exactly. That kind, of, that kind of profile, the kind of goofy white guy. Eh, que I, I get I it. Exactly. Yeah, no. Great actor, though. There's a type. Brilliant. There's a type here. <laughs> yes, great show this week, guys. Come on back next week. Same time, same place. And we'll see y'all next time on the Roundup, baby. <laughs>